the Justice League of America in the Lunar Invaders. Moonbase Peace glowed like a shining jewel as the space-suited astronauts began their daily work. Great tractor crawlers roared like lions as they rode through the great space dome and out across the moon's rocky surface. Laser drills made the ground tremble as they dug deep holes into solid rock. The astronauts on Moon Base Peace had come from almost every country on Earth, and they all worked together to show that there could be lasting peace in outer space. The spacemen had to work slowly while on the surface of the moon. One long moon might rip open their spacesuits, and they would find themselves facing the untold dangers of outer space. To spy, the astronauts had to become friends with each other, and friendship was what Moon Day's peace was all about. Days and weeks and months went by slowly as the astronauts built the very first city in space. This would be the greatest city ever built. When it was finished, scientists from across the globe would come to explore the mysterious secrets of the universe. Looking down on Moon Base Peace was a great silver satellite. It was the space headquarters for a group of super-powered beings known as the Justice the hovering spaceship was the home of superheroes. And why did menacing weapons suddenly emerge from its roof and take aim at Moon Base Peace for love? The weapons blazed with terrible bursts of fire. Crimson laser beams blasted moonward, passing effortlessly through the glass dome that protected the astronauts from the moon's hostile environment. Within seconds, a hundred explosions rocked the surface. Giant drills exploded. Steel beams crashed to the ground. There was terrible panic everywhere as the frightened astronauts ran for their lives. We've got to rush back to camp fast. We'll be safe there. Chief of Operations led his men through the hail of laser beams. Wilson shouted over his radio. This way, men! We're under attack! We've got to get to the communications dome! It's our only chance! The moon's gravity is much lighter than the Earth's, and every leap the astronauts took launched them more than 30 feet off the ground. As the astronauts bounded for the safety of the communications zone, Yuri Podaskin, Wilson's Russian assistant, spied a menacing shadow growing larger on the ground. He quickly turned his head to face a horrifying sight. The base's huge watchtower was toppling, heading straight for the helpless spacemen. You killed everyone! The doors will back! It's your throne! Yuri shouted. And not a moment too soon, because within seconds the tower slammed into the ground. Toward the inner communication zone that also served as their home on the moon. Inside, Wilson called to the others as he rushed to the radio console. I've used our monitors to scan the Justice League satellite, and there are no human life forms on board. Some force has taken over the hero's headquarters and is using it to attempt to destroy us. We've got to let ground control know about this. Han Shen, the astronaut from China, nodded in agreement as he spoke. Whatever is doing this to us must be very powerful. I hope the Justice League can handle it. Moonbase peace to ground control! Come in! Come in! Alan Wilson shouted into the radio. We're under attack, ground control! We need help! Kinan Musad of Nigeria shook his head sadly as he spoke. Why would anyone do this to us? Moonbase peace was not good to hurt anyone. This makes no sense. No sense at all. Two hundred and thirty-eight thousand nine hundred miles from Moonbase Peace, in the sprawling communications control room of the United Nations, 
Another radio operator heard the astronauts plea for help. Within minutes, the call went out on every radio frequency. Moon Base Peace was in trouble, and the Justice League of America was needed. Superman, the mighty man of steel, picked up the message with his super hearing while in Metropolis and flew straight to the United Nations, where the others would join him. In Gotham City, the Batman was making his rounds when he heard the call on the Batmobile's police monitor. Wonder Woman left Paradise Island in her invisible plane, speeding across the ocean to answer the urgent plea for help. Everywhere, the radio signal was heard and answered. The size-changing Adam picked up the signal in Ivy Town. From Central City rushed the Flash, the fastest man alive. Green Lantern, the superhero who wore the amazing power ring, flew cross-country from Los Angeles. And from New York came the crimson-colored robot called the Red Tornado. Soon, all the members of the Justice League had assembled to face the mysterious threat. Our satellite attacked Moonbase Peace. Impossible! It happened, Batman. And it's up to the Justice League to find out why. It is our responsibility if our headquarters harms anyone or anything. It's just incredible, guys! The Flash began. I can't believe it! Our satellite has the finest security system ever built! Green Lantern nodded in grim agreement. I know what you mean, buddy. And besides, the only weapons we have are defensive. They can't attack anybody. The others were somber and quiet. They all thought the Emerald Warrior was right. But somehow, their satellite had attacked the moon base. And none of them knew how or why. The Atom broke the silence. I may be short, guys, but my anger is growing. The rest of the superhero team felt the same way. They were all angry. People could have been hurt, and the Justice League had been created to help people throughout the world. As the heroes continued to talk among themselves, the Batman thought about the Justice League satellite. Their first headquarters had been inside a hollow mountain, until supervillains had learned where it was. After that, the Justice League had decided their second headquarters should orbit the planet Earth, where it would be safe. With Superman and Green Lantern building it, the satellite had been ready in no time at all. And from this modern headquarters, the Justice League of America would always be ready whenever there was danger anywhere. After a short time, Wonder Woman, the Amazon princess, spoke. As current leader of the Justice League, it is my duty to give you your assignments. The others were silent as she explained her plan. Superman and Batman, go to Moonbase Peace. Check out the damage there. The rest of us, Wonder Woman continued, will head for our satellite. If someone has taken it over, we'll just have to take it back. As one, the world's greatest superheroes flew from the UN ground control building. Superman took Batman to his fortress of solitude to get the masked detective a special spacesuit, while Wonder Woman led the remaining heroes to the Justice League transport. What's wrong, Wonder Woman? The Flash's question was repeated by the others as they arrived at the Justice League transporter. Wonder Woman looked grim as she answered the fastest man alive. The transporter's not working, the Amazon replied with a puzzled look. And I don't know why. The Red Tornado had a question, but he waited until Wonder Woman finished examining the machine before he spoke. Has someone tampered with it? He finally asked. His question was answered when the Amazon princess shook her head. I'm not sure, she said. But this might be the work of whoever is responsible for the attack on Moonbase Peace. We can't be certain until we inspect the satellite. But how are we going to get there without a transporter? Green Lantern grinned. He had a solution. Leave it to me, gang. The heroes stared at Green Lantern, wondering what their friend had in mind. He held his hand outward, and the lantern-shaped ring on his finger glowed a bright green. A shimmering emerald beam of light flashed out, 
covering his fellow members in an unbreakable glow of solid light. Green Lantern admired his handiwork. Now we don't need the transporter. My power ring can fly us all into space and protect us at the same time. The red tornado stood away from the power ring's rays. I am a robot, he said. I do not need your ring to protect me because I do not need to breathe. Green Lantern smiled at his crimson partner and replied, To each his own, ready? You fly with your tornado powers while I take the others. Now, let's go. Powered by his incredible ring, Green Lantern flew spaceward. The great emerald bubble containing his Justice League friends following closely behind. Flash, Wonder Woman, and the Atom stared in awe as they streaked through space at an unbelievable speed. Because the red tornado was only a robot, he could not feel either the joy or wonder that his fellow Justice Leaguers felt. To him, space was only the distance between the Earth and the Justice League satellite. Still, the crimson robot almost seemed to smile as the group came closer to their orbiting headquarters. Soon, he believed, they would meet their enemy. I've never seen our satellite from space before, the Adam said, excited at the marvelous view. It certainly is beautiful, isn't it? Wonder Woman added. Green Lantern nodded in agreement as they flew closer to the satellite. He, too, felt it was a magnificent sight. The group of heroes were so fascinated by the image before them that they almost forgot the seriousness of their mission. But when Wonder Woman attempted to enter the satellite, they were all reminded of the dangers that might be awaiting them inside. Merge for me, Nerva! The doors have been sealed shut! You're not responding to my remote control switch. The Amazon princess shouted to her friends, a note of dread in her voice. Whoever's controlling the satellite obviously doesn't want the company, and that includes us. We've got to get in there somehow. A worried flash said. The satellite could attack the moon again at any moment. But none of the Justice Leaguers knew how to get inside the fortress-like headquarters until they saw the red tornado's scarlet figure streaking towards the sealed doors. tornado tail at the satellite doors. With a sudden whoosh of whirling power, the mighty doors blasted open. He did it! Red, he did it! Green Lantern exclaimed happily. Wonder Woman was impressed by the crimson robot's feet, but she knew that the real battle had not yet begun. We can get inside now, she told her fellow heroes. But be careful. There may be danger around any corner. One by one, the heroes entered the satellite's hatch. As soon as all were safe inside, Green Lantern used his power ring to seal the battered door behind them. Air flooded into the room, and within minutes, all could again breathe safely. The deck was quiet. Okay, what do we do now? The Flash wondered. We're on the bottom deck, Wonder Woman said. But our weapons room is on the top. That's where we have to go to find out what's going on. The Adam looked about grimly. He was worried. This isn't going to be easy, he said. Whoever's behind this is putting up a real fight. It's going to take all of our powers to beat these baddies. Red Tornado nodded in agreement. His computer mind had already thought out the best course of action. We will need the blueprints to our satellite to find the quickest path to the weapons room, he said. Follow me. We must make our first stop at the map room. 